Also, there were some comments that were saying that this movie could make the relationship between China, Korea, and Japan worse. Hello everyone, and welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. Everyone, thank you very much for all the requests you gave us in the comments of the previous movie reviews from Japan videos. Out of the many movies, 47 Ronin had the most requests. It is a fantasy adventure movie, which is based on the historical story of the 47 Ronin, or in Japanese, known as Shushingura, and was released in 2013. However, I actually hesitated to make this video, because I might be disappointing those of you who like this film. 47 Ronin is one of the samurai-related movies that I least recommend people to watch. Please understand that I'm not trying to actively make a negative video, but I can't lie either, and I'm just being very honest with my thoughts. I will first briefly introduce the plot of the story, and then share my personal opinions. At the end of the video, I would like to introduce a few reviews posted by other Japanese audiences to share different points of views. In this channel, I will be reviewing movies related to Japanese history and culture. If you want to study about Japan through movies, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to enjoy more content. The time is the Edo period, when the long eras of war had finally come to an end due to the absolute rule of the Tokugawa shogunate. The main character, Kai, is half English and half Japanese, and was found in the forests of the Akko land, lying down being too tired after running away. Kai was actually raised by Tengu devils, and he was almost about to be killed by the Akko Samurai as the devil's child. But the clan lord, Asano, stops this. Asano felt that there is something special about this boy. Kai was taken care of by the Akko clan and grew to be a strong warrior. However, he was still hated and discriminated against by the Samurai. Meanwhile, there was a man named Kira that had a grudge towards Asano, the Akko lord. Kira thought that it was unfair that Asano was given the rich land of Akko, while Kira himself was only granted barren land, just because Asano had slightly more credit obtained in the past wars. Kira was working together with a fox yokai formed into a woman to get his revenge. One day, the fox yokai uses her magic to cast a spell on Asano, and he was controlled to try to assassinate Kira, who was staying at his mansion to take part in a martial art competition. The shogun sent Asano to seppuku to kill himself for this crime, and the land of Akko was stolen by Kira. Kai was punished as a sinner. And also, Oishi, who was Asano's strongest subordinate, was imprisoned in a cellar for about a year. After a year of imprisonment, Oishi is finally released from the cellar. He gathers Kai and all of the formal Akko samurai who were living as ronin to take revenge for their lord. They gathered katana swords to fight with by stealing from their enemies and after overcoming the trials of the Tengu devils that raised Kai. Kai and Oishi come up with a plan to attack Kira from the information that some of their men had gathered. However, when they actually executed their plan, they found out that the men that had provided them the information had been controlled by the fox yokai. The whole plan was a trap. The formal Akko samurai were badly hurt and many others died. The only ones that were left were 46 Ronin and Kai. Will Kai and Oishi still be able to defeat Kira and the Fox Yokai to get their revenge? I hope you can actually watch the movie to find out. Next, let me share with you my review of this movie by focusing on three points. One. The story has almost nothing related to the real 47 Ronin. 
2. The setting is a strange combination of Asian cultures. 3. Using Japanese actors is making things worse. 1. The story has almost nothing related to the real 47 Ronin. If you have seen my video where I talked about the history of the 47 Ronin, you probably noticed that it's actually a completely different story. Let me point out just a few things for you. Kira was much older and in a higher position than Asano, so he already had more power and land. Asano tried to kill Kira during a New Year's ceremony within the Edo castle in daytime and not in his own mansion at night. Oishi did not immediately take revenge, not because he was imprisoned, but because he was hoping to peacefully solve the problem by re-establishing the clan under Lord Asano's younger brother. The number of men that actually took part in the revenge was 47, not because they were tricked and killed, but because most of the men simply did not agree to join such a reckless plan. 47 Ronin attacked Kira's mansion at midnight, and not during his wedding ceremony outside. The existence of the main character, Kai, and the appearance of yokai can be tolerated as the fantasy part, so I was okay with that. But I believe with this many differences, it's impossible to say that this is a story based on the 47 Ronin. It's a completely different story. It's almost like, Hey man, I'll make you a Japanese style hamburger. That sounds great. Here you go, man. Uh, is this really a hamburger? Yeah, the buns are made from wheat, right? These noodles are made from wheat too. This may sound like I'm exaggerating, but I'm pretty serious. 2. The setting is a strange combination of Asian cultures. Next, almost everything you see in this movie is not Japanese, but a very weird mixture of mainly Chinese and some Korean, Mongolian, and some Southeast Asian culture. I think the only things that are Japanese are the characters' names, and the following things are all imaginary. 1. The castles, buildings. 2. The armor. The biggest problem is that they hardly wore any armor during the Edo period in the first place. 3. The hairstyle, clothing. 4. The yokai devil called Tengu. Tengu is a representative yokai with a red face, long nose, beaks, and wings. 5. The ritual procedures of seppuku is not correct. During the Edo period, seppuku was a government official death penalty, and everything from what you eat before, what you wear, and presence of the helper were all fixed. I could just keep on going to count all of the things that were strange, but I'll stop here because I don't want this video to be an hour long. There were two scenes that were especially terrible that literally made me sick watching. One is a scene where one of the comical characters tries to test out the katana they got from the Tengu devil by trying to cut a tree branch in which he fails. He uses the katana almost like a saw against the branch and says, mine is broken. I understand they're trying to make a funny scene with him not being able to even cut a small branch with the legendary katana they had obtained after a great battle. In the past, katana were called the soul of the samurai, and they were symbols of authority for the Japanese warriors. The samurai would have never treated a katana like that unless it was a desperate situation of life or death. As a modern Yaido trainee, I can't stand the horrible way they handled the katana. And I feel despair that there are so many people who had watched the scene. Please don't think that such an attitude towards a katana is allowed in Japan. Treating our swords with respect is one of the most important parts of what we learn through martial arts. This is why we always bow before and after using a katana for training. And there are many manners and rules regarding the katana. Second is the theater art that is played during Kira's wedding near the end of the movie. They are wearing a mask, which is probably meant to represent no theater, Japan's oldest stage art that has a history of over 600 years. 
However, the wigs they wear seem something closer to kabuki, which is a different form of stage art that was enjoyed by commoners with a history of over 400 years. Also, the dance is neither no or kabuki, and is again a jumble of ritual dancing in different Asian cultures. As a no theater trainee, it almost feels insulting to watch this scene, because it is literally something completely different. I understand that this is not their true intentions, but it almost feels that way. If you'd like to see what a real no theater performance looks like, please check out my master's YouTube video. I tried to point out specifically what part of the stage art in the movie is strange, but there were just too many so it was impossible to. So to make a long story short, the story and the movie settings are not based on historical facts at all, and it's an imaginary story of an imaginary world that has almost nothing related to Japan. Please don't think you're learning anything about Japan or Japanese history by watching this movie. 3. Using Japanese actors are making things worse. It's ironic that even though in the movie review of The Last Samurai, I introduced Japanese actors are used as a positive point, but for this movie, it is the other way around. Many people, including myself, were very disappointed that the Japanese actors accepted the roles in this movie, considering how inaccurate this movie is, and the possible negative effects it may have on the world. Also, because they are all Japanese but using poor English to each other, makes the scenes very awkward and unnatural. I personally feel that language, and also the atmosphere of the person who speaks that language, is a very important part of the art, but this movie has none of that. In The Last Samurai, the Japanese characters spoke Japanese with each other, and they only spoke English when they talked with the main character, Nathan Algren, which was much more natural and authentic. As an overall review, I will give this movie a 0 star rating out of 5. Then lastly, let's take a look at some reviews other people wrote to deepen our understanding towards this movie. 1. This movie makes me sick. 2. This movie shows Japanese people as racists. 3. If this wasn't called 40 Center Ronin, it was enjoyable. 1. This movie makes me sick. I really didn't want to pick up this opinion because it's just simply negative, but I couldn't ignore it because there were just so many people with the same review. Many wrote that the director must have had no real interest in Japan, considering the fact he did not study about the culture and history and this movie is just a big jumble of false information. Maybe he thought he would get more views if he just said this movie is related to Samurai and Katana. Also, there were some comments that were saying that this movie could make the relationship between China, Korea, and Japan worse. China, Korea, and Japan have a very sensitive relationship, and creating such a movie that strangely and roughly mixes our culture together. There will be things like, What is this movie? This isn't Japanese. Everything is all Chinese and Korean. Are you trying to say that this is based on our culture? You don't really know anything about us. Whenever you Japanese find bad Hollywood movies about yourselves, you make it our fault. You can find these fights online, where Asian people are slandering each other because of a movie made in Hollywood. I completely agree with the Chinese and Korean people's opinions. I would probably feel the same if I were in their position. I hope the directors that make films about different cultures consider the possible negative effects that the movies could have against us. Two. This movie shows Japanese people as racists. This was also a comment that I saw quite often. As I've explained in the plot of the movie, the main character, Kai, who is half English and half Japanese, is called the Devil's Child, and is discriminated against and treated terribly. When Kai saves the lives of one of the samurai, 
the samurai tells him that he wanted to die rather than to be saved by Kai. We must admit that discrimination against certain people have existed since ancient times in Japan and it even exists today. However, why would they have to express this in the story that originally has nothing to do with discrimination and try to make the samurai look like a racist? If the theme of this movie was to provoke the social problems in Japan, it would have been somewhat understandable, but it's not. It's almost like Japan made a Japanese version of Superman and suddenly put in the content of hate towards Asians in the story. 3. If this wasn't called 47 Ronin, it was enjoyable. Although more than 60% of the people gave this movie a 1 or 2 star rating, there were of course some positive reviews. However, even so, they said, it would have been enjoyable if they just said it was an imaginary story of an imaginary samurai clan. They used very good actors, and the battle scenes were powerful and exciting. What bothers most people is that they call it the 47 Ronin, although there is nothing related to it. It's something that's impossible to completely ignore. Overall, the rating of this movie is 2.2 stars out of 5 on Amazon Prime, with more than 3,000 reviews. By the way, The Last Samurai had 4.2 stars out of 5. So please don't think that Japanese people put bad reviews on this movie just because it's made in Hollywood. Then lastly, today's conclusion. The plot of the movie goes like this. There was a beautiful land called Akko, and a samurai clan ruled the area. However, there was a man named Kira that had a grudge against the Akko lord, Asano, and with the help of a fox yokai, he killed Asano. The land was stolen by Kira, and the formal Akko samurai lost their lord and became Ronin. Will Kai and Oishi be able to win the battle against Kira and the fox yokai? I hope you can actually watch the movie to find out. My review of this movie is 1. The story has almost nothing related to the real 47 Ronin. 2. The setting is a strange combination of Asian cultures. 3. Using Japanese actors are making things worse. This movie has almost nothing related to the actual history of the 47 Ronin and any Japanese culture either. Please avoid watching it as material to learn anything about Japan, because almost everything is fiction and imaginary. These are some reviews by others who have seen this movie. 1. This movie makes me sick. 2. This movie shows Japanese people as racists. 3. If this wasn't called 47 Ronin, it was enjoyable. By oddly mixing different East Asian cultures together, there can be more negative effects towards the relationship between the countries. There are many scenes in the movie where the protagonist, Kai, is discriminated against by the samurai because he is half English. Although discrimination has existed in Japan since ancient times, the story of the 47 Ronin has nothing to do with it. The acting and the action scenes were good, so it would not have been such a problem if they called this movie a complete fantasy of an imaginary world. So that's it for today, thank you very much for watching. If you thought, Shogo, you actually made me want to watch The Last Samurai again, please hit the like button to let me know. And my goal is to achieve 1 million subscribers by January 2023, so your help is what I need. In this channel, you can take a closer look at Japanese traditional culture, tips on traveling to Kyoto, and social problems in Japan. So learners and lovers of Japanese language and culture, be sure to subscribe to enjoy more content. And please, check out our sub-channel and membership through the link inside the description box. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next Movie Reviews from Japan. Thank you